welcome to Middleware Friday, episode 60, April 6th, 2018. Consume and machine learning web service in the Logic app. So in this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit more about machine learning and how you in could integrate with um, a machine learning model through a web service uh, using a Logic app. And this episode, we do not have any um, community content. So in the previous um, Middle Friday episode, I talked about the Microsoft AI platform. And this consists about services and infrastructure and tools. So just to do a little bit of a recap, um, you have the Azure AI services in this AI platform, which could be pre-built AI, leveraging cognitive services. You could do conversational AI, bot service, or custom AI, which we're gonna talk about in this episode, Azure Machine Learning. And beneath it, you find the Azure infrastructure. So that can be AI on data, which can be some of the uh, data capabilities within the Azure platform, either be Cosmos DB, SQL, or Data Lake. You can have some compute um, with Spark, Batch AI, IoT Edge, uh, Azure Container Services, um, leveraging some of the capabilities on um, <clears throat> bare metal um, CPUs, like um, CPU itself, or some of those um, uh, graphical processing units you can find within uh, the Azure platform as well. So you can leverage that strong capability of compute there. And then you have tooling. So the tooling can be any Visual Studio tools for artificial intelligence, or it could be the Azure Machine Learning, uh, Azure Machine Learning Workbench, or some of the other deep learning frameworks, uh, third party, for instance, the uh, TensorFlow or CAFE. And this kind of gives you the overall picture of the Microsoft AI platform. And we're going to dive a little bit more into machine learning. So when are you going to use what? If you look at the AI platform in general, before we dive into machine learning itself. So if you want to build your own type of models, you can end up in Azure Machine Learning. Or if you do not want to create your own models, you could leverage the pre-built AI capabilities using cognitive services and bots, which you've also seen in some of the other Middle Earth Friday episodes. And then you can choose, do you want to do code first, or do you want to use the Visual Studio, do you want to leverage the Azure Machine Learning Studio, which I'll demonstrate later, or do you want to use one of the other capabilities, uh, either machine learning on-premise using the on-prem Hadoop or SQL Server capabilities, or you want to use the Azure Machine Learning Services and then leverage some of the uh, capabilities there with SQL Server, Hadoop, or anything else, which you can find in the cloud. So this gives you a little bit of an overview of when you think of the Azure AM AI platform, whatever it's a Microsoft AI platform, what do you want to do? And this kind of gives you a little bit of a view of where you could potentially end up with. So let's look at machine learning. So what kind is machine learning? So it's kind of the science of letting computer learn without being explicitly programmed. So they kind of build on a lot of data. They, and a certain algorithm, they can start learning um, things about data which happened in the past. It's a little bit also my view. And there's this quote from Thomas Dietrich that the goal of machine learning is to build computer systems and can adapt and learn from the experience, experience of the data that they've been given by them and by in the past data and also data that's been given um, from time to time to the model itself or to the computer where it start, can even start to learn better and better and become, for instance, when it comes to predictability, become more accurate. So example of machine learning can be either mortgage applications so are you or are you not going to pay off your mortgage? An example which I will give in a demonstration later on. Can be pattern recognition, can be health insurance, uh, based on a lot of data, um, how's your health in general look like, or are you likely because of your habits um, develop some type of diseases? It can help in fraud detection, which is a very common pattern within machine learning. So based on what your expense are with your credit card let's say you spend some money in the US and then an hour later you spend some money in Europe which could be like hey this is odd and this could be detected as being fraud and actually it would be fraud unless you could do something like um, time travel and then you got airline flights so that's what it's also you use as a predictability of or optimization so how many um, um, seeds do we have to sell at certain prices so that's very common there as well and then you have something like web search results where machine learning also plays a role. If you look, for instance, at uh, the Google algorithms for search. So when do you leverage machine learning? So in general, it's like, okay, 
prediction is small, you do not have mass pa uh, not past data as any, any historical data as such, then uh, you basically shouldn't do it. But if automated prediction is key or part of your overall solution and you have lots of history data, then yay, machine learning can be something you could use. And within Azure, um, if you're familiar with machine learning, you can use the um, Azure Machine Learning Studio, which is completely browser-based, so you don't have to install anything. You can do it um, out of the box once you provision the machine learning studio and create your model. And it has support for R, Python, and Juniper, Juniper a notebook. And it really reduces some of the complexity. So you, by drag and drop, and maybe a little bit of code and, and configuring your algorithm, you can really easily create a model. So you can load data from different locations. You can clean data using some of the transformations capabilities uh, with Machine Learning Studio. You can apply some of the machine learning algorithms. So these are all pre-built and created for you. And based on your configuration, you can tweak and tune them. You can load R and Python language to clean up more of your data or do some other um, wrangling of your data itself. And then you can expose your model through web services. That's another capability available, which we're going to demonstrate later as well. And that's some, in general, um, it, it, what's really the heart and meat of machine learning, of course, are the algorithms. Whether you want to do uh, regression, uh, predictability, uh, anomaly detection, some of these capabilities are available in the Azure Machine Learning. So lots of these um, algorithms you can pick out of the box and then do depending on what you want to do. If it's classification, like I said, or a prediction, then you can do this. And now I have a scenario which I will demonstrate later. So let's say there's a loan assessment request being put in as a message on top of the service bus, which is being read by a logic app, which subsequently will call the machine learning model through its web exposed web service. The result will be pushed to a service bus topic, which could have um, multiple subscriptions, which would have multiple handlers. And again, these are logic apps. And one of the logic apps will um, call a function to get more of the client details. So let's have a demonstration of how you could consume a machine learning model through its web service in a logic app and basically on the scenario I just showed. So here I have my service bus 360 just to kickstart um, things off. So this is the application. This is some of the data I'm going to send in. So I'm going to send this. It's being sent to the queue. So this is the inbound queue. Let me get the message. Um, it's still here because it, the logic app kind of is being triggered to look at the queue every couple minutes. So here the messages ended up. Then I have this risk logic app, which I'm now going to manually trigger. So I'm going to run the trigger, and because there's a message, I'm going to refresh again, and it succeeded. To give you a quick, quick view of what happened is that the message is being picked up. It will subsequently call the machine learning model based on the data Meaning the content here you see it's base 64 encoded. So, but basically here you see what the message really looks like once it's um, decoded from base 64. So this is the message that comes from the service bus 360. And actually these are the properties. So let me just look at the raw output to see if I can find the content data itself. No. It's not here, so let me correct this. It's right here. So here's the base 64 encoded data. And this is being sent off to the machine learning service, or at least the models being exposed for a web service. And ultimately, the result is being sent to the topic itself. So let's have a quick view if we can find the raw input of this message, the content data. Oh, here it is. So 
this is the data that's being sent towards the topic. So the result is that the loan will be charged off, meaning that it will not, it's not likely to be paid off. Subsequently, the there's another logic app, the risk ascent response exchange. So this kind of picks up this message from the topic or at least one of the subscriptions and then it will run. So let's have a little bit of look here. So the message being picked up, it's being parsed. Basically, um, what I want to derive from it is the loan ID, which will then be sent off to a function, which will give me back basically the applicant of that loan. And a message will be sent. So if I switch over to my <coughs> email, then here you can see the email that's being sent to me in this case, but it could be to the one that um, kickstarted this process. Let's look at the experiment. So here see, do you see the machine learning studio? So this is a trained model. So a lot of data is being put in earlier on and the data is something as you can see here. So there's a lot of data of past loans, whether or not they were fully paid or charged off. And this is kind of the data which the model was being trained for. So there's some transformations going on. And ultimately this model is then being exposed as a web service. So you expose it as a web service, then you have this type of uh, capability where it enables you to um, test it. It shows you some of the code in case you want to use C Sharp and also gives you the ability to test it. So here you see again the input and I can click test and response and it will give me the same type of result. And I can even do it through Postman. So for Postman, since it's RESTful, I'll just put in the input and it will just give me output as well. So you have the experiment on a model, basically then you can expose it. So if I go back to the model, um, here you see deploy web service. This kind of gives you the ability to deploy this and expose this model um, basically to anyone who wants to consume this. So provide data and then the data you put into the model will give you back the probability if in, in, in this scenario, in this case, if the loan is going to be paid uh, in full or it's going to be charged off as it's not likely to be um, paid off. So this demo showed how Logic Apps could communicate with a web service through the HTTP connector and call out a machine learning model that could help in an overall process, for instance, for a loan application by a consumer at a bank. Now with the um, machine learning in general, um, and also looking at this type of solution, there's some considerations. So really kind of the use case requirements uh, at a value, those combined, you know, uh, when I, I pretty built this pretty fast, um, but then again, do you have like actual use case for it? Do you have a model? Do you have the data? And does it provide value? So it could provide value in a way of, can someone with a certain um, background and with regards to its finance pay off a loan or not, whether it be a loan for a mortgage or something else. The other thing you have to consider is the accuracy of your model itself, because there's a lot of factors, for instance, with applying for a loan, which could, you know, sometimes the algorithm would say, okay, you're not likely to, to pay it off, but you know, it could be wrong based on some other parameters that are there. So your data set has to be really complete and very versatile to make it also very accurate and you need lots of data as well. Some of the other things around, um, machine learning in general and looking at this scenario, of course, is the privacy. So um, I obfuscated the data that this is a loan application and later on I looked up the details of the client itself. So there's some privacy involved in general as well, in general with the AI platform. 
and there are some costs. So I have a, a little screenshot here about the machine learning workspace and what you're trying to do uh, based on um, amount of compute transactions and um, a scaling or not. And as you can see, uh, it can really be about almost 275 euros a day, depending on the workload you have. So again, this is also very important based on your workload and what do you want to try to achieve with machine learning? You have to pick the right SKU. If you want to learn more, there's kind of a general URL you could go to, which is machine learning services on the Azure Microsoft.com. So if you really want to learn more about machine learning and some of the stuff I demonstrated here, you can find it here besides uh, the logic app capability. But I put those logic in, uh, apps in as kind of integration touch points. Um, because of, you know, you know, because of the uh, connectors I leverage in my solution. So if you have any feedback around Middle of uh, Friday, please uh, keep that coming through Twitter or the email or other channels. And before I end this episode, I'd like to point out Integrate 218. So this is one of the great integration events. I'm kind of the only um, unique in its kind. It's now grown to be a full-blown global event. It's from the 4th and 6th of June, 2018. Uh, the agenda has been uh, set already also with the speakers. So there's Microsoft Product Group speakers, uh, MVPs like myself and Ken Weir, who uh, we both do this in our Friday episodes. So when you watch this episode, the early bird tickets have gone, but there's still regular tickets available. So definitely, if you want to come, uh, definitely do so. It's a three-day event. It's in London, um, easy to fly to, um, and there's going to be lots of content. And also the ability to really, um, you know, integrate with your or communicate with your peer um, integration professionals of those MVPs and the product group that will be present during those three days. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching and also uh, Bistock360 for being a great host. And I'll leave you with the music credits.